silver silver plate silverware. Well, it's 431. Let's go ahead and start. <coughs> City of Moorhead's Art and Culture Commission meeting. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, and welcome, Sarah Watson Curry. Yay! Yay. <laughs> our new member, representative from our city council. Um, it's great that you're on this commission. I think it's a good fit for you, isn't it? I <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about it. <laughs> that was off the record. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. You do the blood oath after. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, does, um, do you want to say anything? Um, sure, that's like sure. Um, yeah, I, I think I know everyone at the table here, but um, I, I'm a little intimidated since I'm the, the first council representative to follow uh, the footsteps of our former Mayor Delray Williams, so that's I feel like that's a big honor, so I'm excited. Um, I uh, have had two years on the council, so I've been serving on a number of other different commissions, too, so I, I think that brings some good perspective, and because of that, I know a little bit about some of the work that you've been doing. Um, when I was serving on the Park um, Advisory Board, we had a presentation on um, your guys' work map and, or um, work plan, so that was really great to know a little bit more in detail about that. Um, I have an art degree, actually. I went to MSUM in 2006, so I'm, um, I'm not, I don't consider myself an active artist. Uh, I, I do feel that the creative process is definitely a part of my day-to-day -day life, so I'm very excited, and um, yeah. I brought us cookies. <laughs> Ooh. Celebration of our new I the responsibility Yay. of the new member. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next month, you'll be uh, no. no, actually, for some reason, that's a, a treats are a thing that Sue often will do if she's I in know. a baking mood. <laughs> a timely. <laughs> that's fine. All right. Are there any agenda amendments? All right. Um, I would um, ask that you. Uh, someone moved to approve our minutes from December 17th. Moved. Second. All right. Any discussion of the minutes or notes for? All right. Hearing none, I would entertain a vote to approve the minutes from December 17th. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Uh, number five, citizens to be heard. <laughs> Great. Just seen. That's wonderful. That's s still more people Progress. than we had when we were at 7 a.m. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing no citizens to be heard, we'll move on to item number six, reports and information. Number one, reviewing bylaws, election of officers, and designated uh, representatives. All right. So did everybody have a chance to look at what was in the packet and be reminded that in fact <laughs> oh, yeah. we have to elect officers. <laughs> it seems to go very fast. 
mm -hmm. from, from year to year. Um, so there we are. Um, all right. Well, would anyone like to nominate themselves or another of our members to serve as chair? Question. Have you served two years or just one? I think I have served two years. Yes, served two years. Wait, isn't it though she can it, two consecutive terms at two years each? No, it says uh, two one year terms and two to two more consecutively. Yeah. Yeah, we only we only set the officer positions as one year terms. So. Yes, then I Tim. would offer the nomination of our vice chair. I believe it's Kenyon Williams. Ah. <laughs> as, as, as the chair for as next chair. year. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I'd be willing to serve. All right. Excellent. Although with that, that uh, it, it's okay if I because I did do two terms as vice chair. With that, does that does that fit the legality? I mean, the, 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 does that go with the law? Okay, in terms of what we're doing here. It says so the going, office. The not office, a is, not office. a office. Okay, that's one right. Right. Okay. Right. okay, yeah, I can. I'd be willing to do that. Provides kind of a nice succession plan too. Then. Right. <laughs> yes. Good thought, Tim. Okay. Um, so then we need a recommendation for someone to serve as vice chair. I know there are two people missing. Are either of them interested in <laughs> serving? Yeah, sure. Both of them if are actually. If they clarify. <laughs> it's news. Would you be interested in serving in that you should lose. Uh, yeah. Then yes. Can, can I amend my motion to include Susan today on there as, as an opportunity to serve as a vice, vice chair? Vice chair? Um, so you get a twofer on that one? Sure. Yeah. I think that's fine. Yes, you, you <laughs> may amend your motion. Um, well, considering that the two other members of our commission are not here to either speak to <laughs> themselves or um, vote, um, I guess I'll call the vote. Um, all those in favor? Oh, oh, do we have a motion? Or I mean, we have a motion. I'll, se I'll second, second the motion. Thank you. So it's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion of this motion? All right. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of Sue Leggett serving as vice chair and Kenyon serving as chair for this next year, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right then. Thank you for your service. Yay. Yay. Speeches. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank. Thank. Um, great. Um, oh, designating representatives. So this is our new piece. <clears throat> right. Um, all right. Well, we've talked about um, the. ART art review team and um, this is for projects proposals in phase one correct right okay so within the public art policy we have that two part review process in which we have a smaller group review the concepts in general along with some city staff just to really get an understanding of is this really feasible before um, kind of the official vetting where we would solicit public comment, really get down to some of the details of site location and who's caring for what. Um, and so this would be um, for the 2019 term, so you wouldn't be indebted for, for past that, not to say that you couldn't serve past that, but, but you're only obligated for this one year. Um, and we can anticipate that this team will also be the team that will help review with the uh, call for art projects as well, mm -hmm. since that'll be following that same process. So you'll, there will be additional meetings, um, mm -hmm. just to try to give you an idea of what the time commitment might be. But we don't necessarily know, you know, if we get more applications or proposals for public art, exactly what that might be. Just to make sure we're doing all this, so everybody understands what we have to do today. We need two people for that. And one person also for the Mori Community Fund. Eight. Can you speak into that one as well? Because I think we got to kind of do this all at once because. Where's um, the best fit? Yeah. Right. So, what, um, how's that one work then? So the Moorhead Community Fund. So within the agreement that was set up with the FM Area Foundation, 
they provided guidance that the city should set up an advisory committee to help determine what type of projects um, should get priority in funding and then maybe uh, I think within that capacity maybe helping with some fundraising or organized um, efforts so if there is if we're getting really close to being able to implement a project and we just need to kind of fill a gap you know are there measures in which we could work towards a push to finalize the projects that council would ultimately always have the final decision on the projects and the funding but this would be kind of a subcommittee to help organize and prioritize and make those recommendations um, Tim are you um, <clears throat> Prevented from being a part of that? I would think so. Yeah, okay. conflict of interest with yep. to managing the funds. Right. I, I look at, at what the statement that appears on page four that indicates that uh, to designate its chair or a designee to serve okay. on that, does that mean that would that fall to whoever the chair is of this committee? No. I think so, unless someone wanted to feel that they wanted to do it. If someone, someone here really felt like I'd love to be on that committee, I'd be more than happy to. Or else maybe an alt. An alternate too. I guess I don't know exactly what I think. Um, I don't know if I wrote in here, but I think the intent is that it would be quarterly meetings. But at the same time, this is a brand new fund, so there might be more meetings because it's the upfront process of kind of getting systems figured out before it kind of gets into yeah. that. Mm -hmm. in the, for what it's worth, department, I suspect that I will be participating as a, as the foundation representative at that period of time too. Right. Well, to clear the water a little more, I would like to serve on the ART, mm -hmm. the artist review team. Great. I think that would be a, a nice fit for me personally. Well, and I would be willing to serve on the community fund team, either as the designee from this body or as an alternate from the chair. Yeah. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Honestly, I'd, cause I, I'm happy to serve, but if someone's like that, that sounds like something I'd like to be a part of, then please, I'm um, no reason for me to. Okay. All right, then I'll do that one. <laughs> Out of curiosity, um, <laughs> uh, do you think either of our two other representatives, Dennis or? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah, I think they would be interested in serving. Mm -hmm. I could see, I could see either of them, mm -hmm. although either one. In, in either, uh, especially especially in the art. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel awkward nominating someone who's not here. <laughs> but at the same time, I think I, I don't mean to speak for all of them, but I, I do have to say I'm quite proud of everyone who has been appointed to this commission and that everyone who participates is usually very eager to make an impact on our community. Mm -hmm. um, so other than a time commitment, I would assume that, that their heart would be towards serving if they're able. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel weird nomin putting someone on who's not here, but um, I think Tim Wollenzine would be a nice fit for the artist review team as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we'll say that she just nominated Tim. Yeah. Put that on the record so that he knows who to blame. <laughs> just, just a yeah, that's fine. We have candidates would... nominated for all three positions. We mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. It sounds like. Would you like a motion thereof? Yes, I would. Then I would make said motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and a second? Second. Second. Okay. So I believe our motion is for Sue Leggett and Tim Wollensing to serve as designated representatives on the um, ART, the art review team, and for Carrie Winterstein to serve on the Moorhead Community Fund um, Sub advisory board. All right, any further discussion of that? Um, it, will it uh, create any issues if, for example, we need to come back to next uh, month's meeting and find an altern alternate for Tim Wollensian if, if he declines his nomination? <laughs> any issue with that? I don't think so. If, that, yeah. if that's what needs to happen, we can discuss it then. Okay. Great. 
Then uh, I guess all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Great. <coughs> Reps. Uh, Kim, will you be the person to from whom that original communication will come to me and I'll know how where I'm supposed to be when? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be Holly Heidkamp or I, but she and I are both um, staff liaison assignments to that committee. Great. So one of one or either of us may communicate with you. I just don't want it to go to my spam folder and then I miss things. There's a new person. Perfect. Okay. Our um, <clears throat> bylaws review. Kim, is there anything in particular you would like us to be considering? Nope. I just, it had been review? a while since we had looked at them since mm -hmm. uh, we, I don't know if we've looked at them since uh, they were approved since we're a fairly new commission. So it was just a matter of looking at that referencing um, since we would need new chair and vice chair mm -hmm. so you'd have that for a reference but or else I don't have any changes at this time okay mm -hmm. so unless somebody else has anything that they would like to change there's no action required just more for reference is everything in terms of the uh, article 2 section to the number the Commission number and how, how we're appointing Remember, because we've had we've been we've been around long enough now to have some folks rotate in and out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just asking this out of just from your perspective. Do you feel like that's been uh, smooth? Have there been any hiccups that we should address, or do you feel like it's been? I think that's fine? pretty routine for most all boards and commissions. And right now, um, we're currently in the um, hiring of a new city clerk, and so therefore, the the role of that person has always been to kind of follow up with with those appointments when applications are received and how that gets processed with the city council members who um, do the ward um, appointments. And so I think other than just because we're in transition, um, there, were, there was a delay in some cases, but I think that is in alignment with the other boards and commissions, so I think it's just fine. Okay. Since he brought that up, is there, um does it ever happen where there is <clears throat> an opportunity for a commissioner who moves from, who's a ward representative who moves to a different ward, like they could become an at-large member to continue their term, so it's three and three instead of four and two? I'm not sure how that would have to work. I'd have to check with legal just because it would be <clears throat> against the way that it's set up right, right now. You eliminate one ward would not That's have true. representation yeah. then. Yeah, that would yeah. be. Okay. We have had, I know from Ward 1 we've had a few people move too, so then we have had to shuffle folks around. So yeah. I will just say that I think the number is a nice amount of uh, folks to work with. Um, it's easy to have quorum. I don't know how attendance has been in the past, but um, I think that amount is manageable. I do think with the process of nominating people, we could work on streamlining that from the city's perspective. Um, but I always recommend if citizens are interested in getting involved to connect with their representative and also to connect with who's ever serving on the board too. So if there are those opportunities that um, come forward, you could say, oh, you could talk to so-and-so. So we know that there's an interest. Um, we're appointing people right now for various boards and commissions, and I know some of the applicants turned in their applications last week and some turned them in three week, three years ago. So it kind of just depends what is open and what's a good fit. And so it, it, it is a challenge sometimes to find the skill set and the geographical location to all come together. So um, just letting people know that you're interested I think is really helpful um, and knowing it might not be an immediate thing, but down the road there might be opportunities. So I think there's room to improve it, but um, as far as quantity and the way people are appointed, I think it's to echo Kim, pretty regular for the rest of the boards and commissions. And in terms of our current, um, we, this is the end of our third, the beginning of our fourth? 2015. It's our third year. Beginning of our third. Beginning of our third year. I'm trying to yeah. keep track here. Yeah. <laughs> our, our official third so year. So yeah. technically, okay. the end of our, the last year of our first term yes. is a three year term. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oops. Just keeping track of how it's mm -hmm. going. Yeah. <laughs> well, this time next year, we might have to figure out what happens. Right. Next. Well, when we established, there were staggered terms, so some of 
the people who were on since the beginning had either a longer or a shorter term just so we would mm. start so there wouldn't be a mass <laughs> right exactly and so depending on how that aligned <clears throat> would 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 be the difference and I'm not sure I have to check with the uh, the clerk's office again to see how that works and then we've had other ones where folks have moved or or had to resign and and so therefore some folks have again even different timelines <laughs> my, I, I was contacted because my term apparently has or is or will expire and I was contacted by Joel to find out if I was interested and so I see anybody else have their terms or am I the only I think you were the only one and I don't I think that was just like I said, a, a staffing Fine. thing where we had some changeover in staff, and so therefore the right. reach out just didn't happen in the exact time okay. Okay. fashion that it was supposed to. But I think that was last Monday was already approved on consent, so I think everything's official. Stop with me again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> okay. Well, I don't have any changes or other questions is there any other discussion of the bylaws things we would like to consider All right, then if not we'll go ahead and move on to our 2019 budget wow. 6b there it is so starting on page 16 in your packet it shows a little bit of what's going on um, as Christy mentioned at our meeting last um, month that um, within the city budget that was approved for 2019 the light item of um, before when we were established we were given a small budget to do for mailings and other types of operational items um, and that um, city staff had worked to provide a little bit more flexibility where that dollar amount could be used not just for making copies and mailings and things like that, that that we could maybe do a little bit more so the description and and I don't know if council member Watson Curry has anything to add since she might have been um, involved in some of that but we have a little bit more flexibility this year um, yeah I can chime in um, we this item came up in discussion for um, our 2019 budgeting process and so I think the major thing was there again giving you guys some flexibility uh, maybe not necessarily using it as like granting or paying for art but maybe to facilitate some of the work that you've already done for example the um, sidewalk poetry you know maybe it's printing maps um, so people know where to find those or some of those things where it's it's just a, a small um, operational cost but you don't have to do additional fundraising or anything like that too um, I, th yeah, I think I that think was more right. or less the discussion is it, that, that it's not necessarily being um, spent to support one project it's it's supporting the efforts overall of the Commission right. and again we're a recommending body so council still needs to do the approvals of yeah. projects and or spending those dollars um, do we anticipate you know <laughs> 750 bucks is is uh, the expenditures that are have been identified or are those the expenditures that have taken place or those are just the um, <clears throat> ones identified and I'm still working out some of the details with forecast for okay. public art for that, that workshop but that's Got what it. we were um, mentioned at our last meeting um, but do we anticipate you know based upon expenditures from the year 2018 that we you know we're going to consume how much of that Thirty-four thousand, or no? Nope, it would be just what we plan to spend in 2019. So we're also looking at, you know, where do we put some of the dollars that we have? So as you can see, in the revenues is um, we've got that budget item, but on the second one, we have some remaining dollars from the sidewalk art and poetry donation. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember exactly what we had talked about using that money for, but um, because it was all um, speculatory when we were doing the fundraising we didn't know exactly how much the stamps were going to cost in fabrication and things like that so we had done our best guess and we were able to find a local fabricator who was able to provide a bid and provide the stamps for less than what the fundraising effort had brought um, and at that time we had another project that we were thinking about um, and there was a um, sentiment that we wanted to make sure that the intent of where those donated dollars went continues and I don't know if Sue since you were one of the contributors to that 
Um, yeah, we we had a discussion. I can't recall if it was a formal vote, but we did have a discussion that because because this was a crowd funded campaign, um, that because the citizens gave funds for sidewalk poetry, that those funds should remain for sidewalk poetry and art. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they were just sort of put on hold until we were able. And I know the Center Ave is being redone very right. soon, so there might and, be opportunity to. And there's to also a study for 12th <coughs> Avenue South, so I believe from the river to Southeast Main, <coughs> that corridor may also have some opportunity for some stamps, maybe partnership or collaboration with Concordia as it moves through their campus. Along Additionally, there's... 20th Street, the um, in front of the high school. Right, with the underpass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so there are some projects that are already underway or being studied with anticipated projects coming up that we could either collaborate or help fund components because I know the Center Avenue one um, will have some additional streetscape amenities. I don't know if they've all been defined yet, um, but working towards some of that. So just whether we start a discussion as to what those funds can support or where we would like. Um, but just kind of starting that conversation here. I think the idea of um, doing an, a, a, a second round of call for poetry and art um, would be great. And maybe some of our, would some of our general budget be able to go towards funding that call for art, a community forum discussion meeting, what informational postcards, whatever it happens to be, I'm assuming that the general budget could help support that so that the majority of the sidewalk fund could go towards the actual production and implementation of the artwork. I, I think that's exactly the intent of that, <coughs> that budget is to help support okay. projects. Um, so if it would go towards the Concordia thing, it would go to help yep. do some of that outreach as well since now we have some of those systems in place as well to have our framework plan to help guide what those things should be and our, our policy to help with that process. Um, and I think the, that, that $4,000 could also go depending on how our existing call for art comes out. You know, if there's a small gap that might need, you know, we don't know exactly how that will unfold. Um, to the best of your knowledge, have there been any issues with the sidewalk poetry and art stamps that were done what, almost four years ago? <laughs> it was almost four years ago. <laughs> wow. Oh. Do you know if, has there been any either complaints or structural issues or anything? Not that I know of, but I guess I still haven't gotten a chance to do the full walkabout yet to inventory, so I, I haven't seen <laughs> if Now's not the been, time of year to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> to, to see if, those, if there are, you know, there haven't been any calls coming in or anything. Not that okay. I am aware of. Okay. Um, As an aside, that would be very interesting to do that as a group to do a yeah. walk around in this <laughs> summer. Yeah. Yeah. Time, but Wait a few months. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, I had a question about the, the things that are gray, which is, and I appreciate that they're there. Um, the 2019 Legacy Local Government Grant, um, looking at that, what... Um, uh, what is the time frame for that application? That application is due March 5th for okay, so the... Local government grants are the same time. Yeah, is yep. the, I mean, it's the I believe now. so. Mm -hmm. So um, are you thinking that it's not necessarily actually this year? For well, the I-94 tower one? Or yeah, the I-94 tower. I mean, uh, would, the scope of... The time frame of that project does not necessarily match up with that particular legacy round. I'm not sure. I'm still working on the details of the exact process because right now the city is um, taking an identity strategy initiative right. and that has begun. Okay. Um, but I'm not involved with that, so I don't know exactly what's happening or what's going on Got as to what the deliverables and how that would shape. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm working on coordinating with the directors and managers that will be involved to try to get a better understanding of how it fits if that art grant would be 
something we want to for sure pursue. Yeah. yeah. And then coordinate with um, like Region Art Council to, because I know that with the City Art Grant that there's a, a higher level of coordination with Maxine who administers that one compared to Betsy who does most of the other ones. So. Yeah, and it's just it's one of those that you you really need to have a lot of the detail in buttoned up when you're making the application. Uh, so I just wasn't sure if the timing of this spring round is the correct round, given when the '94 tower June worked 2020. or or even exploratory um, art proposals are going to be happening. So yeah. That was just that was my question. You don't want to wait to the fall round because that typically tends to be their underfunded round. Exactly. That's yeah. So there is some impetus to see if we can do it in this round. I, I'm also curious about what's the the back end of that timeline in terms of the project must be completed mm -hmm. by. And you know that tells us a lot about which scope of our project are we actually applying for these funds to do? Is it the partly the mm -hmm. the public art? proposal process or is it the actual painting of a tower because that's not happening until 20, 20. June of 2020 they'll they'll start 20, in 20. May or June and wrap up around August early September yeah but there's a lot of money has to go out the door for the design too so right but money has to go out the door for the design so right and those are that things we're that. still trying to kind of mm -hmm verify and coordinate all of those different elements so is there anything that we can do to help you pull together that information from the the team of folks in the city of Moorhead who are working on I'm hoping that, that within staff? the month that we'll know a little bit more about what that is I believe within the next couple of weeks that the consulting team um, will beginning of February yeah has a meeting that they'll be facilitating okay. some sort of meeting right. I'm not sure the scope of who's invited um, and so by then I'm hoping that it'll be clearer as to exactly what the steps are um, and so if it this board would be something that I'm quite certain that if a Lake Region Art Council grant is going to be um, pursued that we would have an update or maybe have Maxine here um, for our next meeting if that is in okay. fact the track and path that we would be pursuing would be okay is it a, a local relatively local consulting group I don't think so but I'm not certain I don't I'm trying to recall if legacy funds can pay somebody outside of the state I don't think it can so your question about the funding if it's going towards the consultants can't go it, no it can't I wouldn't be able the consultants. to I meant the our um, <clears throat> Some of the parts of our process of selecting the artist or right. facilitating right, that. Right, right. Okay, that's I what I meant. You. Yep. Or is it just actual paint? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where they're from? I want to say Texas, but I honestly don't. That's what I was thinking yeah, too, but I, I don't that, know for sure either. It might be Austin, Texas. They're citizens of the world. Mm. They're keeping it weird in Austin, Texas, and they're going <laughs> to bring it here. <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah, I guess I just, um, you know, for the good of the order, want you to know we're here to help with keeping that moving along because I would hate for that, for that deadline to loom and then for us not really to have the capacity to put together a, a strong proposal um, March 5th when, yes, as we said, the, the fall grant round just is a smaller pot. Um, it's not to say that you know it's also partly based on what other proposals are being considered at the same time um, and we can to some degree take some um, <coughs> some advice from Maxine on the right timing for the application but I would hate for it simply to be that you aren't enough in the loop and can't answer the questions you need to answer and then the questions get answered on March 4th and you're <laughs> struggling to put in an application. I don't want us to do that. The timeline could allow also, I think, for the spring of 2020 grant application deadline because by then they would have the design, the contributing artist, the timeline for painting, 
Um, so yeah, it depends on how they're going to spend the funding. Well, how that the city might feel knowing that the funding might or might not happen <laughs> by, by June. <laughs> right. right. I believe that the city has a deadline imposed by MPS of September of this year, Sue. There we go. So I think that that's partly the reason. So this, is, this is the, so this this is the, the only option. Yeah, this yep, is this is the round. Okay. <laughs> there we are then. Um, well. There we go. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay well if you if you get the information that you need and begin the application and need any other eyes on it I'm willing to help I'll, Super. I will also be submitting a grant for that round um, for something completely different but um, I'll be water. familiar with it <laughs> right. well like I said we do have one more meeting before yes, that deadline so I will definitely board. provide an update <laughs> or a draft yes. you'll have all of two weeks to put it together <laughs> <laughs> writing a term paper yeah. yes <laughs> it is. any other discussion of our budget I'm heartened by the fact that we've got $34,000 at all when we've talked repeatedly about the fact that we were church mice without <laughs> anything going on. So I thank the council for yeah. 4000 yes. bucks and any, yes. you know, all the rest of it that, that sits in there. Yeah. This is from where we started and what we talked about initially on this program. I thought that the, the numbers would be reversed. That 750 would have been our revenue. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost a little intimidating, like, oh, man, we can do something now. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of doing something, let's get to the next. Uh... Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, let's okay, move along. Going along. Our project update. So at our last meeting, we had discussed um, the partnership with Forecast for Public Art to host a workshop um, here in Moorhead. Um, and so there was a recommendation that we would host it and be the lead, um, but partner with Fargo's Art and Culture Commission as well to kind of build our, our metro community. Um, since our last meeting, Fargo's Art and Culture Commission has agreed also to co-host um, the item. And so I'm still working in progress on um, getting everything together, getting agreements drafted um, for council review and approval of those funds right. or of that agreement. Excellent. What was the timeline for when that event might happen? I think late summer, early fall. Right. Okay. okay. Can you give the elevator speech about what forecast <clears throat> art is? <laughs> <laughs> forecast for Public Art is an organization that is based out of St. Paul. Um, and Carrie, I think you did a great job um, when we had our touch base um, since our last meeting um, with all the great things that they do, but they help um, different communities install and place works of public art in their communities. They also publish, a, what's it, quarterly? It, quarterly, the Public Art Review. Mm -hmm. So it really um, highlights all of the work being done in public art all over the country and communities of different sizes. It's really fascinating to to look at the kinds of projects that are out there and the partners at the table that make them happen. Thank you. <laughs> um, so does anybody else have any further questions on that one or should I move on? Let's move on. So um, as our conversation hit on before, uh, Water Tower Art continues. Um, so Moorhead Public Service plans to build a brand new water tower on the south side of Moorhead. I included a map on page 18 of your packet. I'm trying to read this. What's the green? It's so tiny. What's the green uh, open area above the? The water? south side regional park is north. Okay. And what's bigger the bigger one with like the little? So the soccer fields. I what's think. the red area over to the left? Reinertson Elementary. Oh, okay. So so that the, gives me perspective. Okay, I know that. So it's <laughs> south of 40th <laughs> Avenue, and. Um, 28th at yeah 28th Street is ah. the the abutting road okay. so it's south of Good Shepherd Church if you're aware of that okay. location okay. so that's where they're gonna build a brand new water tower and on February 4th there will be an open house at the Yumcom Center to have a discussion on 
what that water tower should look like. Um, I believe the exact um, design team of Stephen Dorsey and Jack Lundy um, have been compiled to develop the artwork and Sarah Lee, or it's not Sarah Lee, Carrie Lee um, Kinslow, who we know uh, before she was married as Carrie Lee went, is facilitating that process. Um, so you're all welcome to attend that meeting or there's an online survey that you can participate in if you're unable to attend. Can you, um, I imagine there's going to be some sort of a Facebook or some sort of, that would be, be great to post, and I post this of course to the Artists of Moorhead Facebook page, but also to post that link for if you can't attend. Um, it's, click on this. Yeah, it's out there. I can. There. Okay, yes, highlight that. Fun fact about the new tower. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is going to be the only tower in Moorhead that is cylindrical and not spherical, so it'll be cheaper to paint. Isn't that fun? Uh, fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, this handy dandy little postcard, are there printed versions of this that we could hand out or it looks like a postcard just based on its layout so I was wondering if if, if there are printed <clears throat> I would guess that that's a possibility somewhere. but I'm not the keeper of those I can check with okay. um, Chris Knudsen at MPS to see if if those have been Great. printed I just, already I have lots of friends down in that neighborhood and I feel like I could you know Make sure they get this. Well, this, but I can do it electronically as well as long as it's on the Facebook page. That's and I'm pretty sure this is following the same model that we did for the previous community forum, where um, they basically took a map and they and you put it in. Kim would put it in the system and print out labels for every resident within a that particular neighbor. area. Okay. Yes, great. So that maybe did just a Facebook reminder is actually <laughs> the best way to go because they've probably already seen it. Now it's a just that nudge. I do and have I'll a map say and from from the previous towers for anybody out there in TV land, the um, surveys are taken very seriously. We have very in depth discussions about the feedback we received and how to balance all of the comments to come up with something that we feel is um, that I guess we felt previously. Um, that was best representative for the neighborhood. And I think they're treating the south, it's nicknamed the south side tower, but mm -hmm. I think they're treating the south side tower as like a neighborhood tower. So they really want to hear from the people. Yep. Cool. Great. Water tower okay. art. Any other <clears throat> discussion of that before we move on to our next item? So call for art. Um, yes, I've been hearing about it. People have been asking me about it. I've been sharing it. I do have to say, it's funny. Uh, when you go to just the City of Moorhead's Art and Culture Commission page, it's not right there. Okay. The link is a little bit of a backdoor kind of, so it's, it's not as easy to, to find as people would like it. Okay, so maybe I'll clarify so you mean like the online portal or the actual like information piece um, and maybe we can talk about maybe it maybe it was the online portal okay or the, mm, the the call okay yeah the call for art did not seem to appear right on our art and culture Commission page okay you know our minutes and yep when our next meeting is and stuff but the call for art there wasn't a link right there on that page for it. Okay, I'll um, add that. Is there a way? I I agree. We've been hearing some. I've been hearing some really exciting things about mm -hmm. this. Um, is there a way we can up that further by somebody, whether it's city staff or it's one of us appearing on a news program or the radio or the Fargo Forum can do an article, something that we can spread even more. This, this really should be something we should be getting some pr free press. I mean, it, it's, it's a big, it's a big, it's thing. a big announcement. I think we yeah. did get a little right. free press, didn't we? Right. So um, there was an article in the extra. Yeah. I uh, it went out as a news release. It was on Facebook. Did Chelsea do an article for the forum? 
I'm not sure, but it ha it is on the Arts Partnership's Call for Art, so I don't know just because of the timing of some of the other, other Call for stories. Arts. I think their deadlines are sooner, so I don't know where that balance of getting our project to get to the top of the list when other folks' deadlines are sooner. Right, right. Um, I know that <laughs> we hope to do another iteration in the extra under the city manager's column soon, I believe. Um, so as for how we kind of do those interim reminders since the initial advertisement and, and issuance and how we kind of keep it to the forefront of folks uh, to continue working on What's the application deadline March 15th because I'm trying to think <clears throat> if I really wanted to reach artists in this region who'd be interested in doing this the extra is wonderful but I, I think your average artist is probably not going to be pouring through the extra up that closely um, I typically would lean towards I mean if you really want to try to target a demographic, I'd lean towards High Plains Reader or some sort of an, a magazine with HP. I, a, mm -hmm. a, an article with High Plains Reader would be, I think, would gather more attention even than a forum one. Yeah. Have Have we sent a press release over to them? Our e notification, I believe, hits most of the major news organizations, but I haven't personally reached out okay. to them just because of, like you said, if if they're demographics and their focus is a little bit more maybe arts and culture oriented they might be mm -hmm. I think they may be a good one to reach out to mm -hmm. especially because there's nothing that says it has to be just visual art right that it can be event-based or time sensitive whatever I think that's an important distinction which is quite unique actually so <coughs> sir do you know is there are any points does he have a, is it a weekly show he has on? Oh, yeah. Um, on point. I mean, he's he's on the radio for a half hour right. or something like that. I think that. it might be weekly. I don't recall, actually, yeah. but, but that would be a great. Shuffle a piece to him. He would be more than happy, I'm sure, to, mm -hmm. to make sure of that. Sure. He attends our staff meeting, so I'll make a of it. Actually, if you want to sell things to a journalist, in my experience, <laughs> saying why we should you, should you should interview with the, about this, is give them a story that goes with it. And for example, um, if reaching out to the forum or the High Plains readers saying, wouldn't it be wonderful if you did a feature over the public art of Fargo-Moorhead with a feature that, hey, we just have a huge call for art coming out about this, so that way you can have something to expand on, rather than just, I'm going to interview you and mm -hmm. what else do I talk about? Now it's like, okay, I can talk about the arts in Fargo, what's, what's out there and how this is a unique proposal for itself. and. So those, those kind of things I find really help to sell to the media why they should cover an event. I think um, another opportunity, the crossover between music, theater, visual art, um, if we had any room in the budget where we could do ads in the college's programs for theater, music, um, something like that, or even the local nonprofits, if we could advertise in their, FM at their Symphony concerts. Opera. Yeah. Blake Agassiz Concert Band, yeah. FM Symphony, just to name you know a few. I think um, I think there could be opportunity there because it is a relatively small community. There's a lot of crossover. So if you have any of those organizations in mind, if you want to send them or maybe forward, if you received <clears throat> the the notices that went out any notification through. This you could forward those links or forward the Facebook um, notice or links to them, or I can do that. Um, okay. Is is if we wanted to advertise in programs and purchase ad space, um, is that something that would have to come from the community fund budget or from our budget? Because I'd hate to dip into the community fund budget and limit what we can do in terms of the call for art. I would guess it would come from our budget. Okay. But I would probably need confirmation, but I would guess that that would be an eligible expense. Might be something, especially the local art scenes, might be a, a pretty de decent discount because this is aimed specifically more at their participants rather than their <laughs> <laughs> audiences per se. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Any other um, discussion of our call for art at this point?
Any member reports or updates? The uh, Lake Agassi Concert Band has a performance next Sunday at 3 o'clock at First Presbyterian Church in downtown Fargo. It's going to be relatively unique because it's small ensembles, so it's chamber style as opposed to the normal 60 plus person group mm. that they usually do. Is that when you say next Sunday, is that the 27th? The 27th, yep, 3 o'clock at First Presbyterian, and their concerts are always free and open to the public, so escape the cold, listen to some music. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a sad announcement this, today. My uh, percussion trio that's been doing the ice performances for Frostival had to pull out this morning because uh, the weather on Friday is a high of negative 7 and a low of negative 23. So we thought that might be a little extreme <laughs> to try to play outside. Oh. Right? <laughs> so I leaned towards Six it. The other two fire. guys did not. So oh. I was willing to give it a go, but they were like, uh, let's not. So, so we're not going to do the opening of Frostville this year, but that's sad. Oh. I do want to add one other thing, though separate, um, which I think was an interesting thing for this whole committee to, to do. Last night, my wife and I were flipping through Netflix, and there's an interesting documentary out there about the Fire Festival, F-Y-R-E, if you all mm. heard about that, the, the, the disastrous yes. festival <laughs> that happened two years ago, uh, two or three years ago. As a person who is on a committee like this and who organizes music festivals and organizes public arts events, this, this documentary on Netflix is a documentary of how not to do it. <laughs> and it, it made me physically ill watching this because you could see the disaster coming and you could and as someone who does these things for a living you could see all these mistakes going down but we're talking with budgets of 20 30 million in mm -hmm. the process of going of things go, going off the tracks and uh, it's an amazing i'd really encourage the members of this committee to watch it because it really drove home to me the importance of things like members of the art committee we have who are going to be approving potential big budget projects and being able to look at somebody who has great dreams and great ideas and absolutely no practical knowledge of how to pull it off, which is exactly what this Fire Festival documentary is all about. A great idea with no practical practical ability to do it. And um, so it was a great reminder of the importance of what we're doing for the public with their money. <laughs> <laughs> so I urge you to check it out. It was, it's, it's, it's an excellent documentary. Hey, thank you. Um, I do have an announcement I can yeah. share too. Um, so our our full council in, uh, is finally been sworn in as of last week. So we had that kind of in a staged uh, process. So uh, the 28th at 4 p.m. Um, in the atrium of the mall, there is uh, I believe they'll be serving cake and coffee and a celebration of the new um, the new sworn in council and mayor. Um, so that's open to the public and prior to our our next meeting. And then two things that I just see on my calendar coming up that might be worth sharing. Um, I also serve on the Cass Clay Food Partners, and uh, they host um, the First Fridays event. And I'm sad that the next one is not at Theater B because no, it's a block sad. away from my house. <laughs> so it was very it. nice to We'd walk love there. It. <laughs> um, but they do have it, it is always a really interesting topic, and though it's focused on food, that can overlap. Uh, food is obviously an art form as well too. Um, they're talking on. Friday the 1st about the food service staff shortage and that's at 8 a.m. and that's at the Dakota Medical <clears throat> Facil uh, Dakota Medical Foundation's um, community room um, which is off of 40 second thank you in Fargo so a longer walk for me <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I'm just coming off serving on the Moorhead Human Rights Commission and um, Another overlap, this one also oddly hosted the same, same location, maybe that's why I'm sharing it, I don't know, uh, is st uh, Strategic Responses to Human Rights and, and um, let me get the full title, and Cultural Diversity. Um, it's a mashup of a number of nonprofits that are talking about these. They've brought in a, um, a very, an overly qualified expert to talk about this, which is cool, but it's a mashup of um, uh, uh, the nonprofits Chira, South Sudan Reads, and the International Potluck. So I believe there's a potluck incorporated into it. It's free to attend at 6 o'clock Thursday, February 7th. So um, I think that's kind of an interesting topic, and I, I, I do think that there could be some overlap with this um, commission and some of the things that the HRC does as well. So 
couple things that I'm excited on my calendar. And also, since you mentioned the Dakota Medical Foundation, I believe before our next meeting, Giving Hearts Day will happen. Oh, yes. yes. So I encourage everybody to, if you're able, support <laughs> your charity of choice, your nonprofits, <laughs> your artistic <laughs> and cultural institutions. You're going to be working hard that day. Yes, I will be working hard that day. Um, so since it's before the next meeting, um, we have actually uh, two different projects that will be happening. Um, at Theater B, we're hosting another um, theater group in town. They're um, newly branded as Wheelhouse Theatrical Productions, um, formerly Music Theater Fargo Moorhead, and um, so, uh, like me, they're they're these uh, folks who are a little bit displaced professionals or arriving in Fargo Moorhead and saying. Where do grown-ups do theater? <laughs> um, and uh, so they um, have been operating for, um, I want to say, probably 13 years now or something, and um, have been on a little bit of a hiatus, and now they're going to produce a musical in our space. So Theater B, which doesn't normally do musicals, will be hosting a musical group, which is fun. Stalling um, <laughs> and um, they, uh, they're they doing a show called Danny Girl, and um, sort of the elevator pitch on that one is a young girl in cancer treatment goes on a magical adventure looking for her hair. Uh, <laughs> it's a very heartwarming show. Um, and then uh, on um, Valentine's weekend, um, my husband and I are performing a play called Love Letters. And uh, it's a, a lovely piece um, written by A.R. Gurney, nominated for an Olivier. Um, it's uh, basically two childhood pen pals are tethered forever by their lifetime of letter writing. Mm. Um, and they, are, they sort of experience every kind of love. It's not just a romance. It's definitely a friendship and caregiving and familial. And they, they become anchors for one another. So. Um, that's on Valentine's weekend. So that's what we've got going on. And there'll be more stuff after our next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for me. Any other announcements or questions? Can, anything? All right, look at that. We are doing great on time today. I'm assuming, do I need to really, um, you know, ask for a motion to adjourn? I have a question. Right. Yes. It's Tuesday, January. It is. Our record is normally, our meetings are normally on Monday, so we'll note for our home audiences that our Monday meeting from January 21st is actually being held on January 22nd, which is a Tuesday. Thanks so much. All right, with that, we will adjourn our meeting at 528. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.